Boys and girls, we've just completed writing a problem solution essay, and that should have been an objective, unbiased piece. Now we're going to begin the argument portion of our curriculum, and we're going to do this by looking at one of the most famous arguments ever delivered in American history. And it was delivered in the form of a speech called I Have a Dream by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. This was given at um, the Ma March on Washington in 1963. And the reason Dr. King did such an effective job of his um, speech was because he used the elements of argument. So we're going to look at these three elements of a good argument, and then we're going to annotate the speech, keeping in mind the three most important parts of an argument. So, first of all, you have logos. Logos simply means the logical points that a person is giving to back up your claim. Your claim, of course, is the main point you are trying to make. When we were writing problem solution, we called it a thesis. You may call it either a thesis or a claim. Sometimes when people are giving speeches, they refer to it as they, their major claim. Whatever you call it, you have to give logical points that back up what you're trying to prove. It's your reasoning. Um, let's look at it like this. Let's suppose that you were trying to convince your mom to have pizza for dinner, pepperoni pizza, instead of this vegetable dinner she was going to have of Brussels sprouts and green beans. So you must, in order to be convincing, you can't just beg and plead. You have to make some logical points. And one of those might be that pizza has more nutrition than Brussels sprouts. You could also talk about the fact that it's cheaper. You could mention that it's on your way home from work, Mom, and would be easy to pick up. All of these would be logical reasons why pizza would make an excellent dinner and would support your claim that pizza is a better dinner than Brussels sprouts. The next element of a good argument is pathos. And this is the emotional part of the argument, and this is usually really easy for students because it's the part of an argument that appeals to a person's emotions. If you use the pizza example, you can say, Mom, you've worked so hard all day. You deserve to have an easy dinner. You don't deserve to have to cook, Mom, because you are so amazing. You might give a little story of how, remember last time, Mom, when we all ate pizza together and what a great night we had? Sometimes people give quotes. Um, Dr. King, in his speech, he used lots of vivid language. He used allusions. I want you to look for a couple of allusions that Dr. King referred to. That's referring to something famous, and sometimes that's an emotionally charged thing that really makes... Um, a per, it really tugs on the heartstring sometimes, and that's what pathos is. It's, it is an emotional part of the argument that can be very persuasive. Commercials, of course, use pathos all the time. That any, almost every commercial you see, you're just like, yes, oh, and it really makes you want to buy the product or whatever they're trying to get you to do. Dr. King was very, very emotional. He used repetition. That's another part of pathos because when you refer to something over and and over and over again, it can really get to a person's emotions. So repetition is another part of pathos. The final part of an argument that is very, very important is the ethos. And this is the credibility and trust of the 
person delivering the speech, the orator, or it could be the writer of the speech. And Dr. King had a lot of credibility as he delivered his speech. He was already a well-known figure, but he, he even furthered his ethos because he had so much confidence in his delivery. And he really gained a lot of credibility on the national scene that day, and his ethos was increased greatly. Uh, many times the ethos involves citing credible sources, which you should know a lot about. So, boys and girls, to recap, let's remember that when a person is delivering an argument, the most important part the logos, which is the logical points a person makes, the pathos, which is the emotional part of the argument, the emotionally charged words, the part that gets to a person's heart, and then finally the ethos, which is the credibility of the speaker. I want you to look at all three parts of this as you annotate Dr. King's speech.